children i welcome you all to your english class i hope you all are safe at your homes for today's english lesson i will be resuming the chapter 2 of your honeycomb book a gift of chappals that we had started quite a long time back but we could not finish it then because of my failing health condition now by god's grace i am feeling completely fine so we can go back to uh, to the story of mridu and her little adventures but before proceeding with the rest of the story it's very important that we recall what we had learned since it had been a very long break most of you i guess have forg- uh, have might forg- uh, might have forgotten what we had uh, studied about mridu so let's get back to the recalling of the lesson okay so we had met a little young girl called mridu she was staying in madras she was staying in uh, present day chennai with her grandmother and grandfather in tamil a grandmother is called tapi and a grandfather is called thatha okay so they were staying together and there we see that one day uh, her grandmother decides to take her to aunt rukumani's house to meet her cousins ravi meena and lalli okay so she reaches there and then she is dragged and pulled by ravi uh, because he wants to show her something in the backyard of the house right so he drags her and there meena tells her that they have found a kitten and they have kept it hidden from uh, from the knowledge of the grandmother from uh, from her their mother as well. we had also heard ravi narrate a story an incident in which he had a very tough time arranging milk for the kitten then we found that uh, he had kept the kitten's name mahindran and this fascinated this amazed mridu because it was a very unique name no one keeps their kitten name as mahindran and mp pune for short okay so she was eager to know what was the history of this name and much eager was uh, ravi because he wanted to show off his knowledge of history so he tells her that this cat was no ordinary cat but an Uh, an extraordinary cat because she had a royal lineage she was a descendant from uh, of the mahabalipuram rishi cat so obviously meena and mridu did not believe her they started laughing at him they did not believe they giggled but ravi was very sure that this cat that he had that he had in possession was no ordinary cat and so he was very proud of his knowledge of history and uh, science okay so again we had seen that uh, while these three people meena ravi and mridu were talking to each other about mahindran they had heard a shrieking sound okay it was very disturbing noise and the most startled was who was the yes was the cat okay it tried to hide itself from the sound by uh, by getting under the uh, under the chili tray okay but it was of no use because uh, it had spilled the chilies over itself so it uh, obviously it was in pain uh, the cat was in pain so we had uh, we had also seen what was the sound about that sound ravi said was the sound of um, lalli trying to learn to play a violin but she was failing miserably obviously because she was creating noise and not music so now we are going to learn what happens next we had completed uh, the comprehension check that followed but we could not complete the chapter so now we can start the lesson from where we had left okay so the you will find part 2 of the chapter on page number 
let's begin reading it first mridu crept up to the window lalli was sitting a little distance away awkwardly holding her violin and bow string her elbows jutting out and her eyes glazed with concentration now we can find her uh, their third cousin because meena and ravi were already in the scene lalli did not enter by now now she has also entered let's see what was she doing mridu wanted to know from where was the sound coming so she crept up to the window okay she reached the window she wanted to see what's going on inside the room so there lalli was sitting a little distance away she was sitting a little far away and uh, she had in her hands what violin and bow string i hope you have seen a violin it's a musical instrument it's a string instrument that needs to be played with a bow string her elbows jutting out jutting out means what it was uh, it was away from her body it was uh, it was away from the surface of her body and her eyes glazed with concentration she was trying to focus on learning to play the violin and she wasn't uh, she wasn't good at it she, so she was trying hard to learn it from the man who knew it better okay she had her master ji sitting right in front of her we will find that out in front of her with most of her back to most of his back to the window was a bony figure of the music master okay so what do we see that uh, she was sitting a little away from the window and right in front of her was a bony figure who is a bony figure who is skinny who is very thin he doesn't have muscle on his body so uh, he doesn't uh, he is not very uh, he is not very fat okay he is very bony so the music master was sitting right in front of lalli he had a mostly bald head with a fringe of oiled black hair falling around his ears and an old fashion tuft now what do we see here that the author is describing the appearance of master ji of the music master so here we can see that the master ji was a bony figure he did not have a muscular design he was very thin and he had mostly bald head his head did not have much hair except around the ears okay if you can see the image you can see it here okay he have some hair around his ears but nothing on the top of the head it was it was bald okay he was bald and also he had an old fashion tuft or a, a tuft is usually a bunch of hair uh, thread like hair which uh, is usually at the back of the head usually uh, people in the older days kept uh, kept some uh, part of their hair unshaven they always uh, let it grow so if you can see here that he had kept a tuft okay it was an old fashion tuft a gold chain glimpsed around his leathery neck and a diamond ring glittered on his hand as it glided up and down the stem of the violin so what happens here we find that the master is further described in these lines okay he is wearing a gold chain around his leathery neck the gold chain uh, was shining and the neck is described as uh, leathery because it had fine lines on it maybe due to old age or middle age so his neck was leather like and he was also wearing a diamond ring which was glittering when he when he moved his fingers up and down the stem of the violin a large foot stuck out from beneath his gold bordered vesti's edge and he was beating time on the floor with the scrawny big toe okay do you remember that uh, um, mridu has seen a slipper with uh, scrawny toes marks on it yes we will be see uh, now we will be learning whose was it so here we can see that uh, a large foot the master had a large foot so it was stucking uh, it was stucking out it was it was sticking out the vesti vesti is a tamil word for dhoti 
it was showing outside his uh, dhoti it was beating time on the floor that means what when he was playing the music he was tapping his feet he was tapping uh, uh, he was feeling the beats of the music and he was tapping uh, his toe on the floor okay so beating time means to uh, get the rhythm of the music uh, when you are playing an instrument okay you do that usually you move your hands you move your legs to uh, get into the rhythm so the music master also was doing the same thing because he was the one who was playing the violin and uh, uh, Lalli was learning it. So he was wearing a gold bordered vesti. A dhoti that uh, that's outline was golden in color. Okay. He played a few notes. Lalli stumbled behind him on her violin. So he played a few tunes, a few notes and Lalli was following him because she was trying to learn. But the violin which looked quite helpless and unhappy in her hands difference the music master's notes seemed to float up and settle perfectly into the invisible tracks of the melody it was like the wheels of a train fitting smoothly into the rails and whizzing along as ravi said what, uh, what is the comparison made here the comparison of the mu uh, music master's notes were made to the movement of a train what Ravi said, Ravi said that uh, the music produced by the music master seemed to float in the air as if it was so smooth, so calm. Okay, it was floating in the air and after a time it settles into the invisible tracks of melody. It becomes beautiful compositions but uh, uh, Lali's music was completely different music master's notes were as if uh, a train is moving on a smooth track okay it was whizzing along what is this whizzing whizzing is a sound whistling sound produced by a train when it uh, uh, moves along a track to clear the traffic okay mridu stared at that huge be ringed hand moving effortlessly up the violin stem making lovely music so uh, mridu was startled she was very pleased with the way the music master was playing the violin she uh, she was staring at that huge bearing hand what is a bearing hand the hand which was wearing a diamond ring okay and it was moving effortlessly as if he knows each each set of string he knows each set of beats to play his violin squawk there was lalli derailing again so she was trying to produce the music lalli was trying to produce good music but she was failing miserably she was derailing means what she was leaving the track of melody and she was on another track only amma came a well from the gate so Someone is calling, someone is crying out. There was a wail outside the gate. There was a calling. So, someone called Amma. Amma, oh! Ravi sent that beggar away, cried his mother from the back varanda. So, uh, this sound was made by a beggar. Someone have come to ask for arms. Someone has come to ask for uh, food or clothing. And... Ravi's mother does not want to attend him. She, uh, she tells Ravi that Ravi go and send the beggar away. Tell him not to come. Cried her mother from the back veranda where she was chatting with Tapi. So uh, Tapi and aunt Rukumani were talking to each other. She had said from there, she was sitting at the veranda. She, was, uh, she said from there to send the beggar away. He has been coming here every day for the past week and it's time he found another house to beg from. Pati explained to Tapi because obviously Tapi was unaware of the fact that he is a regular visitor. So uh, Pati told Tapi that he comes regularly and he always comes to this house only. It's high time that he should go to another house to beg. 
Mridu and Meena followed Ravi out. Ravi was uh, uh, Ravi was sent to inform the beggar that he should go away. So Mridu and Meena also followed Ravi. The beggar was already in the garden because he was habituated. He regularly visited this place, so he had already made himself comfortable in the garden, making himself quite at home. He was a regular visitor. He did not thought himself to be a beggar, so he sat there. He had spread his upper cloth under the neem tree and was leaning against its trunk. So what happened? There was a uh, there was a tree. There was a neem tree. He spread his cloth under the shade of the neem tree and with his back against the trunk, he he sat down to rest. Apparently prepared. to take a little snooze while he waited for the arms to appear he thought that he might take some rest might uh, might be a nap he might sleep for a little snooze means a nap a sleep he might do that till his arms arrived arms is the things that are given to poor charity okay go away said ravi sternly ravi went there as he was told by his mother he sternly he strictly told the beggar to go away now my pati says it's time you find another house to beg from now pa he has heard pati say that she uh, she was telling uh, tapi that uh, he should find it's high time that he should find a new house for himself to beg from ravi told the exact words to her okay to him the beggar opened his eyes very wide and gazed at each of the children one by one so he gave a look at each of them he looked at ravi mridu and meena one by one the ladies of this house he said at last in a voice choked with feeling because he did not expect that uh, uh, the ladies of the house was, would turn him away because he used to come there daily regularly and um, he uh, he was he felt very fortunate to get something from this house are very kind souls i have kept my body and soul together on their generosity for a whole week now what he says that the ladies of this house he he says it with a choked voice he is very very much filled with emotions he is filled with uh, a lot of emotions okay so he told them that the ladies of the house are very kind okay i have kept myself alive body and soul together means what i have survived i have kept myself alive because of the charity done by these ladies i cannot believe that they would turn me away what he says that i it's uh, it's very hard to believe that they want me to go away without any arms okay he raised his voice amma amma oh sad his wail might be but it certainly wasn't feeble he was very disheartened he was very sad his voice was uh, his voice was sad but it was not feeble it was not weak it was very uh, sharp okay it was very strong it began in a deep strong rumble somewhere in his withered belly and came booming out of his mouth so that amma amma o oh, amma he was so hungry it might happen that because of the empty stomach the sound was so strong okay the voice uh, 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 the voice that came out from his mouth might be the result of his hungry belly ravi tell him there's nothing left in the kitchen called rukumani so rukumani uh, heard the uh, heard his calling heard the beggar calling so she said tell him that we don't have anything in the kitchen and he is not to come again tell him that he should not come any more he should not visit here any more we don't have anything to offer him she sounded fed up she was fed up because uh, because she uh, she had offered so much in uh in the earlier uh, in the earlier days that she no longer wants to attend to the needs of the beggar now ravi didn't have to repeat it all to the beggar he did not have to repeat it all because uh, rukumani's voice was loud and clear 
what his mother said had been easy for them all to hear okay she had said it from the varanda but it's it was quite audible in the garden so everyone had heard it under there under the neem tree the beggar sat up and sighed so now he sat up and he sighed okay he was he took a heavy breath out i will go i will go he said wearily because he was tired uh, tired of the day he was very weary weary means tired only let me have a rest here under this tree because uh, because he was very tired he wanted to rest for a while under the shade of the tree the sun is so hot the tar has melted on the road so why does he want to rest now in the afternoon because the because the sun was too hot it was shining really brightly and the tar the uh, the road was made of tar so it it felt as if it was melting okay because of the hotness or because of the heat of the sun my feet are already blistered because he was not wearing slippers so he had got blisters on his feet under under the feet on the sole of his feet so the boils and bubbles on the screen which appears uh, due to burns or rubbing is called blisters he stretched out his feet to show large pink peeling blisters on the sole of his bare feet so he was not wearing any slippers so he showed to the children the blisters that had formed in on his bare feet i suppose he doesn't have the money to buy chappals mridu whispered to meena and ravi what did meenu uh, mridu say that i think he doesn't have enough money to buy slippers for himself have you got an old pair in the house somewhere she wants to offer a uh, offer slippers to the beggar okay so she asks ravi that do, uh, do you people have any old slipper for the beggar because he might burn his uh, feet again so i don't know said ravi mine are too small to fit his feet or i would have given them to him so what did he say because obviously he was a very young kid so his feet and the beggar's feet were very different in size so ravi said that i don't know that uh, any slipper uh, we have any slippers in the house or not but my slippers will, will be too small for him because my legs means my feet are too small and his feet were larger than mridu's and meena's so he had the largest of the feet among these three mridu meena's feet were much smaller than ravi the beggar was shaking out his upper clothes and tightening his dhoti okay because he is ready to leave he wants to go again because, uh, he is very uh, disheartened he felt very sad now he was wrapping he was shaking up his upper cloth because he had laid that on the on the floor uh, on the floor of the garden right on the green grass so he shaked it off to uh, move the dust to move the grass to move any traces of uh, green grasses so he did that he shook it off and then tightened his dhoti because he wants to leave he got himself prepared he raised his eyes and looked fearfully at the road okay he just raised his eyes after tightening his dhoti he looked at the road because he had to go there only with his bare feet and the road was burning hot glimming in the afternoon heat so the road uh, with tar on it was shining it was uh, it was glimming he needs something on his feet meena said her big eyes feeling it's not fair okay she was getting emotional meena was getting emotional what does she say that he needs something to wear in his feet okay Shh, said ravi i am thinking about it ravi is trying to find something or uh, get uh, get an idea of how to arrange a, uh, a slipper a pair of slippers for the beggar blubbering it's not fair because meena has said this earlier that it's not fair he was also 
blubbering okay blubbering is a kind uh, whining or moaning or a cry when you feel helpless okay it's not fair it's not fair isn't going to help what did he say meena you said that it's not fair it's not fair just telling these words won't help we have to find something else in 2 minutes he will be frying his feet on that road because he is leaving now the sun is so hot the uh, tar has melted and it's so hot on the road that he might burn his feet when he reaches there what he needs is a pair of chappals so where do we get them now he asked them or maybe he is asking himself that at this point of time he needs a slippers and not our mere concern okay he needs a pair of slipper immediately come let's search the house so they want to give uh, the beggar a pair of slippers so they need to search it in the house because their own slippers are of no use to the beggar he pushed mridu and meena into the house so he pushed them he said come let's go in the house and search for a pair of slippers just as she stepped into the veranda mridu's eyes fed fell on a old looking chappals she had noticed when she arrived so when she was uh, stepping uh, when she was entering the veranda she noticed she looked at the chappals that she had earlier noticed while entering the house when she came to their house to aunt rukumani's house she has found a pair of slippers at, uh, means outside the veranda ravi she whispered to him she called him she whispered she was very uh, she was very low on her tone because she uh, she did not want to make other people hear it so she called ravi who's are those so she has seen those slippers and she is asking who's are these slippers ravi turned and glanced at the shabby looking but sturdy old slippers okay shabby looking means what it was old and it was it has a very dull appearance so ravi turned to look at the slippers that mridu was showing and he glanced means glanced means uh, he looked at the shabby looking but sturdy old slippers it was strong enough it was old however but it was strong he beamed and nodded these are just the right size so he was very happy he was filled with joy he was he beamed means he was filled with joy and he found the right slippers so he said that these are the right slippers these are the slippers we were looking for mridu and meena followed him nervously back into the garden okay here said ravi to the beggar dropping the slippers in front of the old man wear these and don't come back the beggar stared at the slippers hurriedly flung his towel over his shoulder pushed his feet into them and left muttering a blessing to the children in a minute he had vanished around the corner of the street now what do we find that ravi took the slippers the old shabby looking slippers and he he reached the, he uh, he reached the beggar he dropped the slippers in front of him that here wear it wear these and don't come back <laughs> because obviously he has stolen it he has not told uh, he has not asked from his mother about the slippers he just gave it to the beggar he said just fly off from here just rush and don't ever come back here the beggar stared at the slippers he looked at the uh, slippers because this was the only thing he needed right now hurriedly flung his towel he quickly uh, just took his towel around uh, means on his shoulder he put it on the shoulder pushed his feet into them means he just wore the slippers he he uh, he pushed his feet means he just wore it now children we will be doing the meanings of the part which we have studied uh, so far so let's write down the meanings we have written some of them in your earlier video in the first video that uh, that i shared so after we will be writing the meanings of this part that we have read now okay jetting out which means sticking out sticking out 
from a surface. Okay, second word is jutting out is sticking out from a surface. Second word is tuft. T U F T. Okay, this means a bunch of hair. A bunch of hair or threads or grass or grass growing together, growing together. at the base okay a bunch of hair or threads or grass growing together at the base next is gleamed gleamed which means shine brightly shine brightly okay Next word is glided. Glided means moved along smoothly. Moved along smoothly. Next word is vesti. Which means dhoti in Tamil. Okay. So first word is jutting out, tuft, glimped, glided and vesti. Next is stumbled. Stumbled. Which means followed haltingly. Followed haltingly. Halt means stop, okay? With a pause. Again, we have now, please, uh, please take a screenshot of this part before I rub the board, okay? Next word is busy. It's in your book as well. You can write it from there if you miss this one out. It means, oh sorry, it's not in the book. So move quickly. Move quickly with the whistling with a whistling with a whistling or buzzing sound buzzing sound okay next word is be ringed this one is in your book be ringed The music master is wearing a ring. Master is wearing a ring. Okay. Next word is way. W A I L. Which means a high pitch, pitch cry, a high pitch cry of pain, cry of pain, 
ग्रिफ और एंगर ग्रिफ और एंगर ओके द नेक्स्ट वर्ड इज फिबल एफ डबल ई बी एल ई फिबल फिबल मीन्स वीक नेक्स्ट वर्ड इज रंबल आर यू एम बी एल ई रंबल विच मीन्स टू मेक डीप टू मेक कंटिन्यूस डीप डीप रेजिनेंट साउंड नेक्स्ट इज विदर्ड डब्ल्यू आई टी एच ई आर ई डी विदर्ड विच मीन्स ड्राई एंड रिंकल्ड एंड रिंकल्ड सो हियर आर सम ऑफ द मीनिंग्स प्लीज टेक अ स्क्रीन शॉट then you have blisters blisters boils or bubbles boils or bubbles bubbles on the skin on the skin from burns burns or rubbing next word is eyes peeling peeling it means with tears blubbering cry moon cry or moon or sh or shine or whine whining is like complaining okay why beamed beamed shine brightly shine brightly and here it means smile okay so these are the meanings that you have to write vanished disappeared so these are the meanings that you need to write in your copy so children let it be till here only for today we will meet in the next lesson to complete the chapter and then we will follow the exercises okay thank you for watching the video bye bye